Hey folks, everything new under the sun. This is War News 247. Uh, I'm going to make some quick comments on a couple of these articles just to kind of uh, demonstrate the state of affairs where we are on the, the timeline of uh, these particular wars and rumors of wars. This is uh, this says, atmosphere of impending doom in Kiev. The worst is yet to come. Uh, Putin, no negotiation. We are stronger than ever. At this point, um, they uh, NATO is giving up. Uh, you know, American uh, news channels are saying that uh, the American people have no interest in supporting Ukraine anymore. <clears throat> uh, money is getting funneled to Israel instead. And, of course, the Republicans blocked a bill that was going to uh, give Israel and Ukraine a bunch of money at the same time. So that money's not getting to Ukraine. And I think the, the world is kind of bored with Ukraine at this point. And it appears Russia is effectively going to take it over. I think it was even Russia or, or maybe a general who said, you know what, maybe we should just take over all of Ukraine. And this sets the, the stage for, uh, again, the, the larger war where they really are directly on NATO's border at that point. Whereas prior to that, of course, Ukraine was a um, somewhat neutral, although um, had a Western, uh, had Western puppet government and leadership uh, because of the coup that occurred there what was it 10 years ago i don't know when it was but anyways um and Zelensky he has limited time in office now now because of the, because of this this is uh, breitbart.com nato has three years to prepare for war with russia warns poll and security chief now they're not going to let the cat out of the bag they're not going to come and say, you know what, this is the exact amount of time, uh, and if Russia can uh, invade us before this time, um, then we're not going to be ready. They're not going to say that. So what does three years mean? Does three years mean three weeks, three months, um, you know, three seasons? I don't know. I don't know what it means, but it probably does not mean three years. It's probably code. Uh, but they, the point is um, that time is running out. <clears throat> what this probably means to me uh, is, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe three seasons uh, at most uh, because Russia is strong. And I think uh, that comment by Putin was, was accurate. Um, it, Putin uh, appears to be strong. And NATO has no real interest at this point uh, to go against them, not to put boots on the ground at least. They're happy to pay a bunch of money and have a bunch of Ukrainians lose their lives, um, but they're not interested in going in. Not only that, but uh, NATO, um, and it's crazy, it could be all... Uh, uh, misdirection, um, but NATO countries are running out of ammunition and hardware. Um, so is the United States. Remember, there's a a law put in um, uh, stopping the export of uh, American-made uh, weapons. Uh, there's been ammunition manufacturers that that uh, uh, you know went bankrupt and were sold off, and limits on ammunition and all these sorts of things. <clears throat> and it means that uh, the the countries are getting prepared. They don't want to spook. The public, they don't want to say something that is going to scare the public and give the public a real heads up on what's happening, but they do want to get the public ready, get their minds conditioned that war may be coming. So they're going to do things on the sly, maybe like this uh, movie on Netflix that Canadian Prepper was talking about, to get people used to the idea of maybe some economic trouble, maybe some famine, maybe some wars and rumors of wars. Just get them used to the idea, comfortable, so that they're not absolutely surprised and uh, riding in the streets when these things do happen. So they want to get you ready, but they don't want to tell you uh, overtly. They want to kind of hint towards it to set the stage. And that's what the central bank does, by the way. They don't want to say that the economy is bad, but they'll hint around it. They'll say things, you know, oh, this and that is slow, but it looks up in the long term. Um, again, they're not going to tell you the truth straight up, um, but they will come out and give you hints as to what's happening. So all these movies and things, they could very well be uh, psyops. Um, <clears throat> in World War II, uh, the Pentagon, um, the U.S. Army, put out lots of propaganda films about, you know, strength, uh, about, you know, information, providing information, providing counter information, disinformation, um, uh, getting the public on one side, the U.S. public, the U.S. citizens on one side, telling them one side of the story, um, you know, because uh, they, the point of the government and the army is to keep control. If they lose control of the public um, and the civilians, 
um, then it, it's Mad Max and everything is off the table. So the the armies and uh, the government, uh, they will tell you anything uh, as long as you step in line. Uh, and that includes lies, misinformation, malinformation, um, <clears throat> disinformation. They will give you all that. That's just simply called propaganda. And that has been happening for, in the history of man. But most recently, as it relates to um, social media videos and that sort of thing, it, it, you know, in, in the Second World War, it was uh, movies on film and such that they would show people propaganda pieces. This is common on both sides, on the, the Russian side or the enemy side, the German side, uh, the Japanese side, and the American side. Propaganda is a common thing. So disinformation, misinformation, malinformation is not new. The government has been doing it to you. Uh, but now uh, now that uh, we, you know, the people, are getting information out to the government, well, the government calls what we do misinformation, malinformation, disinformation. Meanwhile, a lot of us, a lot of us are speaking the truth, but they don't want that truth to get out. They want their uh, form of the truth to be out there. So, get ready. Three years, uh, I think, much less than that. Uh, again, if something goes up uh, in 2024, and it looks like it could, if not another 20, uh, if not another 2018, the economic crash of 2018, then something bigger, maybe the main crash, the thing that should have happened in 2018 and earlier the collapse of the economy. But they won't let the economy collapse. They'll take you to war. Because that, that's going to be the great distraction. It's the great unifying uh, event that happens. Distracts us all from the economy. And it allows the government of the United States and other uh, countries to say, you know what, it wasn't our fault that the economy collapsed. It was it was World War Three that started. So we have to rebuild. Not, nothing we can do about it. We have... A single boogeyman, and that is Putin. So everybody look over there at Putin. Look over there at whomever it is, Iran, uh, whatever it may be. But let's all work together to rebuild our economy. Meanwhile, all the rich people are, are um, getting all the, all the money shifted towards them. At the end of the day, they end up being richer, and we end up being poorer. Um, and it's all planned, uh, effectively. It's all happening exactly the way um, the people in power want it to happen. Let's move on. Tehran, this is jpost.com. Tehran warns of an explosion if the war continues. Now, they've been um, uh, blustering and uh, uh, bellicose and using hyperbole this whole time. Uh, they threatened Israel. Uh, and this, this war has been going on for how is it, how long has it been? October 7th. Uh, so we're over two months since October 7th happened. Iran has kept saying, you know what, if you keep going, Israel, we're going to do something. If you keep uh, continuing, we're going to do something. They keep threatening, but they aren't doing anything. Well, now they're threatening some explosion. They said, the continuation of the Gaza war will lead to a regional explosion, uh, the foreign minister said. And he explained that the scope of the conflict has already expanded to include Lebanon and Yemen. So it's, uh, you know, it's not World War Three, but it is uh, certainly expanding in the Middle East. At any moment, there is a possibility of a big explosion in the region. <clears throat> and this is interesting. This is just suggests that it's a, a nuclear explosion. Not one, not one controllable by any party. So Israel can't control it. And maybe Hamas can't control it. Maybe because they, they're going to drop a nuclear weapon. We know they're uh, going, uh, trying to build that. We know their stated goal is to wipe out um, the Jews in Israel. And they don't care about Hamas. They don't care, care about Palestinians. They just want to wipe out Israel. And so there could, could there be a big explosion in the region? Not controllable by any party? I think they're talking about nuclear weapons here, folks. And um, I don't think... I think at some point nuclear weapons are used uh, because I believe it's in Zechariah, which speaks of um, events that occur on the ground where you're not supposed to touch the bodies, um, but you're supposed to let trained groups of uh, people recover those bodies and likely because they're radioactive from some sort of a nu nuclear uh, weapon detonation. Now, here's an interesting story. This is Reuters.com. Uh, Argentina has a new president, President Malay, and he's a libertarian economist. And he has come out and basically said that Argentina has no money. Libertarian economist Javier Malay took office Sunday, warning in his maiden speech 
that, that he had no alternative to a sharp, painful fiscal shock to fix the world's economic crisis decades with inflation heading towards 200%. Folks, get ready. You're going to be told this by Biden, if he's in power at the time, uh, by Trudeau, if he's in power in the time in Canada, by whomever your president, prime minister, uh, leader is, uh, chancellor, whatever it may be. You're going to be told this at some point. Argentina just happens to be the first nation that's doing this. He said, there is no money. Uh, I wonder if I can find it. He said specifically in his speech that there was no money left. And uh, it was an incredible uh, statement to tell the people that. And, uh, you know, most times the public won't vote for somebody who, who says, you know, we need to bring in austerity. We need to cut budgets. But, but here it is. He says, uh, in the short term, there is no money in Argentina. So they're going through economic collapse. The rest of the world is going to follow suit. And why does he say? Well, he says because the central bank is printing money out of thin air. And he's absolutely uh, correct. They're printing money out of thin air. That causes inflation. That causes every dollar that you own uh, to be worth less and less. Every time another dollar is printed by the central bank out of thin air, your dollar in your wallet is worth less. You could, you have less buying power with that dollar. And so goes with all the other dollars. And this is called hyperinflation, where you need more and more of the same dollars to buy the same good or service. You know, if, if an apple is a dollar, well, uh, hyperinflation happens, your dollar is worth less. All of a sudden, you need a dollar and 10 cents, a dollar 50 cents. All of a sudden, you need two dollars to buy that same apple. The apple didn't change. The value of your money did. And that's what's going to happen. The economy uh, is going to collapse. They're going to bring a new world economic system. They're not going to accept chaos, folks. The Antichrist doesn't want chaos. He wants to rule and control everybody. Therefore, he's not going to uh, allow complete and total chaos. He is going to come into power at a time when the world's on its knees in famine, economic collapse. And he's going to convince the world that if, he, if they elect him as leader, and they accept the mark of the beast and bow down to him and worship him, that he will give them food, he will uh, fix the economy, and he will make everybody you know rich, whatever it may be, maybe healthy as well, and he will fix whatever cyber attack or computer virus there is going around, and he will do all that, and, he, and there will be an agreement with Israel uh, for seven years where they can rebuild the temple, and that's where we have the world, one world leader, the one world government, and the... Um, and the mark of the beast system, the one world economy. And included in that is, of course, the false prophet. So I'll leave there, guys. A lot of things happening. Incredible to be watching it. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, we have a bit of a storm going on tonight. I, I, have keep, I kept losing power, uh, as, as you've heard in the, in the prior videos. But that's kind of the quick update as to what I see. Um, <clears throat> I'll make the comment about uh, uh, Canadian Prepper. He, he's very interesting, entertaining. He brings a lot of information, but what he misses is uh, the biblical point of view, the eschatological point of view. And he's, instead of connecting to the, dot, the dots to the truth of the word, he is uh, starting to connect the dots to his own conspiracy theories uh, about, you know, 666 and um, Masons and the number 33 and all these. And there's bits and pieces of truth and organizations related to all these that are true. Um, but at the end of the day, Bible prophecy is occurring, and he doesn't admit that, and he doesn't want to admit that. He's not going. He's not a Christian, so of course he's not going to want to admit that. Uh, so he'll look for any other solution, answer, whatever it may be, uh, to the things happening in the world to explain away what's happening, so that he feels like he understands it. Um, but folks, if you're watching my videos, get into his comments and and tell him that Jesus is coming soon, that he needs to be saved. I, I made a comment on his video like that, and uh, and all the people watching him too. They want, they'll take and listen to any answer as long as it doesn't include the Bible, uh, the Antichrist, Jesus Christ, and the end of the world. Uh, they want their own answer to it because they don't want to admit that God rules and reigns and, in some, at, and some, at some point they will be accountable to Jesus, to God. And that they have to accept a free gift of salvation. Otherwise, they'll be going to heaven uh, or otherwise they'll be going to hell if they don't accept it and uh, heaven if they do accept it. And people don't want that. They want to be their own gods. That's why they like this idea of Mad Max, because then they can be their own Rambo. They can be their own God. They can be their own Savior. So the whole prepper, the video things, those um, appeal to people who want to be their own gods and their own strongmen. 
But we need to realize, we need to be humble, realize that we actually do need a Savior, and it's that is Jesus Christ. He died once for our sins. He's coming again, but we're going to go through some hard times first. So thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.